Hey, so today we are talking about the, how can we manage a life cycle of a second generation package using Coparo. So with Coparo, you get so many functionalities to manage your second generation packages, starting from creating a package itself. So you can use Coparo to create a package, a second generation Salesforce package through the Coparo user interface, or you can import an existing package that you might have created before using Coparo through the Copado CLI and and after after you have imported it going forwards you can going forward you can manage it through the Copado UI with Copado you can generate new package versions you can pass any installation keys you can synchronize the project conf configuration as well as you can uh, you can co you can manage the package version life cycle so you can create a package in a beta version when you think it's time to promote it and mark it as released so that you can install it into the production orgs. You can promote a package from the Copado user, user interface as well. And lastly, but most importantly, Copado helps you distribute package to multiple environments at once. You can either distribute or package through your uh, Salesforce pipeline that you might be using within Coparo, or you can distribute it to several environments at once. And uh, one of the best best things that Coparo helps you with is with managing dependencies. So when you install a package into an org, Copado finds out it dep its dependencies and first installs them into the, your target environment and then proceeds to in install your package so that your package installation does not fail. And lastly, you can also view where your packages have been installed within Copado as well. So let's get started and take a look at some of these things. So before jumping on into Coparo, I want to talk about what are we going to see today. So we are going to see a few packages that are outlined in the Easy Spaces LWC Trailhead app. So this this is basically a fictional event management company that is doing some work for individuals and B two B market space. What what uh, what what this is used for why salesforce created this app is to demo not only lightning web components but also modular design and unlocked packaging so we'll see how how we can uh, how we can create several interdependent unlocked packages manage which have dependencies between them so let's let's take a look at what are we going to take a what are we going to see today so we're going to see four packages today. The first one is called the Ease ES objects, which which holds all the base configurations, which are our base custom objects, custom fields, and permission sets. This package is independent of all the other packages. Then we are going to see another package called as base styles LWC. This holds the front end aspect of the packaging. So, uh, so some theming, some logos, some custom custom lightning app page templates. Again, this is independent of the other packages. Then we have a base code package. So this package is creating some classes, some other custom configuration, which is dependent upon the objects that we had created, as well as the theming related uh, configuration that we had done in the previous packages. So this is a dependent package. And lastly, we have the final easy space management uh, LWC app, which contains most of the metadata, including the final application, application, some lightning web components and other things. This is dependent upon all the previous packages that we have seen that we have talked about. So let me quickly jump into VS code so you can see what do we have over here. So I have if uh, let me maximize the screen a little bit. So I have four packages over here for in four different directories, one, two, three, and four. And like I mentioned, the base objects has a bunch of objects. The base code has some source code, which is dependent upon ES objects and base styles. Base styles has theming related uh, components inside it. And lastly, we have the ES space management, which is further divided into two different uh, directories. Uh, the first one, which contains the all the major LWC components, as well as the application, and the last one, which contains some tests related to the Lightning Web components. 
so what we did was let's uh, let's 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 since we are already here let's take a look at the sfdx project.json so we created all of these packages within copado but what copado does is copado updates keeps on updating your sfdx project.json with what you have created as well so that you have parity between what you see within Copado as well as what is there in your repository. So this is this is our path for the easy objects, ES objects, then we have ES base styles over here, then we have the base code LWC, we can see the path specified over here and this one has this dependencies column over here which highlights that this is dependent upon ES objects. Uh, we also have the easy the last package which is the easy space management and we can see how, uh, that how it is dependent upon all the other three packages over here. So we create these, we write these dependencies once in SFDX project.json and then we can totally forget about them because Copado is going to manage the dependencies uh, for us whenever we go ahead and do the whenever we go ahead and do the uh, package installation. So we we are going to see how to create these packages from Copado. But let's say if you had created some package already outside of Copado, then you could have then we could have just imported it into Copado, and for that we could use the package import command that comes out of the box with Copado and once we run it the package would be imported onto the Copado UI so it can be managed from there. So let me jump to the Copado UI now. So within Copado we have a packages object which keeps track of all the packages that we have. If we want to create a new package we can we can click on the new package button, we can uh, go to the Salesforce package and as uh, so we can see that we can create Salesforce unlocked and second generation managed packages. When I click on the next button it's going to ask me a bunch of things like what is the package name, what is the repository that we are trying to target, what is the default branch for this package, what is the path of this package, which pipeline it is attached to, which dev hub uh, we sh this package should be created and what is the type of the package. So uh, if, I, if I was creating a new package, I'll just gonna fill up these fields, hit on save and the package would be created. Let me open an all package that I've already created. So I'm opening the ease, ease, uh, ES base styles LWC package. You can see some of these fields and how I have populated them over here the dev hub orgs, the package path, repository pipeline and so on and so forth. Once I have all of these fields filled up, how do I create a package? So for that I'm going to click on the generate package button and that's going to trigger a job whose, whose, uh, whose, whose status I can monitor from over here and we can see that the package creation was successful over here. Once a package gets created successfully, we can start seeing its ID pop up over here as well as uh, like I mentioned, Copado keeps on updating the um, SFDX project.json as well. So all those IDs for those four packages are present over here within the SFDX project.json too. And that's a good indication that a package was created successfully. So uh, once, once we have created the packages themselves, we can start creating new package versions and for that we can click on this button over here which uh, has the new button over here. When I click on new, it again shows us a bunch of fields that we can fill up uh, to create a new package version. So I can choose the package version name, its description name, again where the, where the source code is located and which branch it is located, I can choose that. I can choose if I want to run uh, test classes when I'm creating this package version which is important if I want to promote it later on. We can skip validation, provide an installation key over here and so on and so forth. We can fill up these other fields and just click on next. I'm going to open, let's, let's open up one of them and see how it looks like. So once basically we have created the new package version, 
we can see those details over here and then we can click on generate package version so this button goes ahead and creates the new package version for us and we can monitor the progress of that package version directly from over here we can see what's going on is it getting successful is it getting failed how much time it's taking and so on and so forth one of the things that I want to highlight over here is that when you first create a package it is in the pre-release status which means that it is still in the beta state if and and beta packages can be installed into can be installed into sandboxes but not into the production org so once we are uh, once we have created a few versions tested them out installed them into higher orgs and we know that okay this last version is the one that is production ready then we can publish that package version and mark and promote it to be released once a package is released then we can go ahead and install it into the production org so if I open up this the third version uh, that's the one which is published and marked as released so uh, this way we can highlight that which package versions are production ready so we have created a package or we had we imported it then we looked at how to create new package versions we talked about how can we how can we promote a few package versions as well but how do we distribute them so for distributing them we come back to the package page itself and there is a distribute package button over here so I can click on this distribute package button which is going to then list down all the versions that I have for that package created it's going to show me the status which ones released which branches were used for their creation their version numbers and so on and so forth once I know which package to install I can select its version click on next and then there are two ways how I can distribute this package so the first way of how we can distribute this package is through a pipeline so if you're familiar with Copado you know that Copado pipelines are how we interconnect different environments that you have and uh, you can start a development from the lowermost org then eventually promote changes to the promote changes to the higher orgs that you have in the pipeline defined so if we choose the distribution through through pipeline we can attach a package to uh, a, either an existing user story or we can create a new user story so for instance I can search for different user stories over here and attach this package version to that user story and once I promote that user story to the next environment the package will also be promoted to that environment so if I created the package on user story 208 in my scratch org then if I go ahead and promote and deploy that user story the package will be installed to package int and similarly if I promote and deploy that user story once more it will be installed into the next environment in my pipeline and that's how we can use the user Coparo's user story based model to distribute the packages throughout your pipeline the other option is to distribute packages to several environments at once so for that we choose the environment option we can go ahead and click next and now what I'm gonna see is I'm gonna see the list of all the environments all the credentials that I have authorized within my within within Coparo and I can select multiple environments from here where I want to distribute the package to and I can go ahead and click on next I can confirm the details that okay I'm gonna install this package I'm, go I'm installing this version of that package and then it's gonna show me a list okay you're trying to install this package version in all these different apps and I can just go ahead and click next and the installation would be triggered to all these different environments so how does that look like so um, so so I'm not gonna distribute this uh, we don't have to distribute all these packages one by one what we need to do is we need to just distribute the last package which uh, which has the dependencies on all the other packages so in our scenario that is the ES space management LWC which had dependencies on all the other three packages so I went ahead and distributed this uh, the first version of this package which was which I released to the MCDX int environment 
and uh, a very uh, nifty capability of Copado is to see where your package versions are installed. So I'm right now on the package version page and I can see where in which environments this package version has been installed. So we can create reports, dashboards to seeing uh, to, to, to see which version is installed in which environments and then we can take uh, decisions and then that's how you can manage the several package versions that you have within your within your org. Uh, also conversely if I open up the environment right from here what I'm gonna see is I'm gonna see all the packages that are installed on that environment. So like I told you, I just distributed this final package which was the Easy Space Management LWC to the MCDX Int environment. But since Copado knew that this package is dependent upon all the other packages, Copado first installed the dependencies into the MCDX Int package one by one and then finally installed the ES Space Management LWC so that uh, there was no error we, when, we, when we went ahead and installed these packages. And that's how you can manage the package installation and dependencies through Copado as well. Hope this was helpful. Thank you.